Hello and welcome to Friday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And on screen we have a puzzle by Peter C. Hayward. And this is part of his uh, Celebrating John Cleese series. It has an enormous approval rating over on Logic Masters Germany. And um, I wanted to do a puzzle by Peter today for a very good reason. Uh, as mentioned in yesterday's video in which we exposed Mark as a murderer, um, yesterday was the last day of the ARG, the alternate reality game that we've been running for the last week and a half or so. And as I confidently predicted, many of you did solve the final puzzles and there was a great reveal. And the reveal, I'll show you the reveal, I don't think I'm giving away any secrets now, was this. Um, Cracking the Cryptic's first book, a book of our greatest hits, which is coming out on Kickstarter. There's going to be a Kickstarter campaign. Um, next week and I have to say uh, and all credit to Peter Peter C Hayward and David Stevenson uh, the ARG puzzles and the whole the whole thing was their work it is a quite incredible incredible puzzle hunt um, and uh, in fact what we're going to be doing is sort of packaging it up in a self-contained form because I know a number of you probably haven't had time to try it and it's going to basically be be something that you can play whenever you want to um, going forward. And yeah, so huge, huge kudos to Peter and David. It is really, really wonderful. Um, and I guess I should tell you a bit about this book. Um, uh, I sh actually, before I do that, would you believe that that ARG was just sort of um, a seed in Peter's mind just a month ago? That is less than a month's work. It is unbelievable what was achieved uh, in the last few weeks. Um, so what's going to be in the book? Well, it's going to be some of the great puzzles we've featured in the channel on the channel over the last few years and some new puzzles as well that we're going to we're going to um, get from some of the great authors in the world of Sudoku. Uh, it's going to include some puzzle hunts as in, well, some Sudoku hunts, I should say, actually. It's going to cost $19.00. Uh, that's not including delivery um, and yeah it should be absolutely amazing and one of the great things about doing it on Kickstarter is that we can we can have some stretch goals so if it goes well um, we're hoping that we can we can make a better book and that's the idea um, so yeah do check it out I'll, I'll obviously give you more details as and when it launches um, but yeah it's been it's been a really really cool few days um, to follow uh, the ARG and finally, to let you you guys all know that this book is hopefully, hopefully it's going to come out. Um, now, as I say, this is part of uh, this puzzle today we're going to try. Uh, it's, it's part of Peter's series on John Cleese. So it is a snake Sudoku, obviously themed, I think, around the Python of Monty Python. Um, and let me read you the rules. How does this work? We have got normal Sudoku rules apply. Additionally, the final grid will contain a one cell wide python which begins and ends at the red squares okay uh, the python may not touch itself orthogonally or diagonally digits on the python form a palindrome with the given eight that's that eight presumably at the midpoint um, the blue squares are not python and each blue square shows how many of its eight surrounding squares are python so the blue squares work a bit like minesweeper then um, so they can presumably be any number between one and eight, although eight won't work because that would make a snake that could never have these two cells as its head and tail. Um, and all possible blue squares are given. Right. So there is a sort of negative constraint going on as well. Now, as I say, do have a go at this. Um, if you want, um, if you've done any of the puzzles in the ARG, you will know what a brilliant brilliant puzzle maker Peter is and this one is, is all well it's already been solved by lots of people over on Logic Masters Germany to great acclaim so it should be absolutely brilliant I'm looking forward to trying it the way you play is you click the link under the video as usual the way I play is right now let's get cracking um, now what do we do to start this we can okay um Right, so my, my eyes are drawn to this square um, because that cell there is blue, so it must see a snake cell. Now, this can't be a snake cell or it would be a head or a tail. So we can color that one in a color that means it's not snake. I'll use green for not snake. 
Um, and I'm also, I suppose, when I find snake cells, I'm going to have to differentiate them from heads and tails of the snakes and midpoints of the snakes. So I'm going to make the snake... I'll make it grey, I think. Grey should stand out. Now, so this square here, how does, how does this see a snake cell? And the, I think the key point I'm thinking is, I think this square has to be a snake cell. Because if it's not, how can this see any snake cells? So if that's not snake, the only cell this cell could see would be that one. And then this would axiomatically have to be a head or a tail, which it can't be. There's only one head and one tail of the snake. We don't know which of these is which, but it doesn't matter. But what does matter is we get a gray cell there. Right, OK, and same logic again, therefore, or similar logic. This purple cell is definitely it's the midpoint of the snake. So we can't have a snake that sort of comes in here and then turns back on itself because this would definitely touch itself orthogonally. Don't let your snake touch itself orthogonally. So the only way, therefore, that this this can get out of this sort of region here is down here. So it must come out downwards. Beautiful. OK, and now we can use the palindromic property. So how could this square ever be on the snake? It can't be. Because if this is the center of the palindrome, we know that this digit and this digit on either side of it must be the same digit. Um, so, yeah, that can't be snake is what that tells us, which means the snake must bend. It must go along here. Can't touch itself. So that must be green. Must extend one more. Can't go into a cul-de-sac or that will be a head or a tail. Can't go into a cul-de-sac. Oh, right, so now we're actually in a position to enter some digits, look. So this blue cell must be a 1. Its mind sweeper clue is 1. It sees one snake cell. This one, 1, 2, 3, ah, this could be 5 or 6, look, because it, it depends whether this one is in. We don't know about that yet. This one must be 3 or 4. It sees 3, it might see 4. Oh, uh, th this three is, no, it's not broken because look, but we we do know about these, th these three cells. They must all be snake. Otherwise, this three clue is not fulfilled. So those are snake, which tells us this is six. Ah, not, ah, not that color. I just want to put six in. There we go, six. Uh, now the snake must turn. It can't come back on itself. It's got to go through the gap. And we are actually off to a good start today. And we must make sure the snake, it can take none of these cells because all of these cells are either orthogonally or diagonally connected to the snake. So we can get all of those as green. This snake must turn. It must therefore continue to not touch itself. And yeah, we're off to a great start. Um, okay. Uh, now, what do we do next? The snake has turned a corner there. Now, that little cell is touching this cell diagonally. So that must be green, which forces the snake along the top row. This becomes a four. This must be fill in uh, One, two, three. Is that a four as well? I think it is. I think that's a four. I think that's only seeing four cells of snake. This cell must be doable as well, actually. That's seeing... Oh, I thought I was seeing three then, but I wasn't seeing that this one is red. But the fact it's red doesn't change the fact it's definitely snake. So one, two, three, four. This is four. Uh, now, what do we do next? This square, maybe? That's blue. So this already sees five cells, but it could see six. So this is five or six. This one. Okay, that cell's quite interesting. Look, it sees three snake cells, but it can't equal three because there's a three in the row. So it must be higher than three, but it can't get up as high as six or seven both because it sees six and seven by Sudoku, but also because these two squares are definitely not snake. So this has to be four or five. 
Um, ah, now that's interesting. That's interesting. Now let's have a look at this. How could this be four? Well, if it's four. No, a better question is not whether this could be four. It's whether this can turn upwards. If this turns upwards, how do we make this work now? Because this has turned. So none of those two squares could now be snake. So they're both green. And now this sees three. The only way it can see get to four is if this is a snake cell. And that cannot be a snake cell. Because now any way of getting into this square involves the snake hitting itself. Um, because it can't come up here. This, this, There's no snake end for it to join. So it would have to come into this cell and then turn back on itself. Don't let your snake touch itself. So we can say, I think, that square's green. Which means this must come... It actually forces this whole loop, look. Because both of these must extend. And once this comes down, it completes... It completes the top part of the snake. So those squares turn green. We know these two can't be in because you can't get the snake in and out. And so far, so good. It's a beautiful puzzle. Um, now that must be a seven. That's seeing seven snake cells. This must be a five. This one must be a four. And and we and I tell you what we do know we know the the length of the snake now because we know the distance from the head or the tail here to the center. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. So the snake this we know that the snake this side has to be eighteen long. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen so there are four degrees of freedom or if you like we've got to find four extra cells compared to the most direct route as the crow flies right that's that's perfect well not perfect but it helps because what does it tell us about for example this square here or in fact any cell in column nine of the grid it tells us they can't be in because if we take any one of these squares, we have to take all three of them. That's one of the properties of these snake puzzles when they can't touch each other, touch themselves either orthogonally or diagonally. Once you come into a corner, you have to take three cells in order to come out the other side. Now this would, would therefore take five cells. And I don't think therefore we can actually... I think it would be too long according to the logic we've just did. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Oh, it works. Oh, it's because this square sort of, yeah, okay. So the five, the five here, that, that cell sort of comes out of the count of the 18. So yeah, okay. So it can come into column nine. Oh, that's a bit annoying. Um, right, so we're going to have to find a different way of determining how this snake moves. Now, what is that way? We've also got, look, this square is an interesting square to me because that square is blue. So it must see a snake square. But if the snake doesn't come over the top there, it's got to come. Oh, I see. It could come just like that or just like that. Okay. No, that's no use. Don't know what's going on. Maybe we can do some Sudoku fours. Oh, we can, yeah, look, we can. We can get a four here. Four must be in one of those three squares. Four. Oh, that's interesting as well. So fours in one of these two squares. This one sees two snake cells. Hmm. Oh, oh, hang on. I've got a better bit of logic here. If I do that, if I try and use column nine of the grid, then look, the only way now of making this 
sort of part of the snake 18 cells long is just to go directly like this. So I think this is 18 now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. It is. So in theory, it's the right length. But it breaks because look at this little cell here. Let me color this in. Uh, color it in gray. This square. This is going to have to be the fourth cell. 1, 2, 3, 4 along the snake. Well, this is in the same column as 1, 2, 3, four this square so these two squares because of the palindromic property have to be the same digit if we try this arrangement therefore we can't use this arrangement because they can't be the same digit by sudoku so in fact is this going to work and it's going to let me unwind yes so so this can't come to column nine which which means all of those turn green So this can't be a four because it can't get to four. So the four goes there. One of those is a four and this square has to be, it can be two or three. This square can't be three or four, but it's seeing two snake cells, but the snake could, I suppose, bend away from it. Uh, so I've got to get, sorry about this, I'm trying to work out how to work the, 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 the shape of the snake in the bottom part of the grid. I've got 6 here, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. It just seems that there's quite a lot of um, latitude regarding how this snake moves. Maybe I can, can I continue with Sudoku? Sevens, fives, no. Negative constraints, maybe. Oh, that one's, I thought I thought I found it then with this four, but that's seeing, that's already seeing five. So this four is fine um, because we know any green cell cannot contain the correct minesweeper total because of the rules of the puzzle. So maybe I've got to decide whether this comes up over the top or goes this way. That would be a useful thing to know. Ah, right. Well, I can do something. It's very minor, but the fours, if this was a four, I don't think it can be a four because this now has to have the correct minesweeper total. And if the snake comes over the top, this would have to be at least equal to six. And if the snake doesn't come over the top, it has to come this way. And now it, how many cells can this see as a maximum? Well, it could see two before the snake would have to turn in order to come over to the right side of the grid. So that's quite good. We get a four out of here. So the four is locked into one of two cells. Now, can we do anything with that? So if this was four, one, two, if this was four, it could come up over the top and do that. Oh, I suppose it could go underneath and do that. Ah, if this was four, ah, that's a little bit, that is a little bit interesting, look. If this is four, that is interesting in terms of the palindrome. If this is four, the snake cannot come into this square because if it does, that square would be a four because of the palindrome and that square would therefore clash with this one. So that, that is interesting. So if this is four, this goes over the top. If this is not four, then this is four. And it either goes over the top. Ah, right, let's look at that. So if this is four, can we conclude that this can't turn? If this is four, it has to go, what? It can't come to this square because that will clash with this square. So it would have to turn up. 
and it has to turn up anyway because it has to get to four now it can't come here because that would be five then so it has to do that and now it can't go up or it can't get down again so it has to do that right so now we've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and we need it to be 18 so ah okay so in this in this iteration it can't come to this square or it will close too quickly because that's touching diagonally so it would have to take the next square as well so it has to duck down so it has to do this one two three four five, that's nine now 15 it needs three more cells so it can't come up so it has to do this this is the if this is four the only way the snake comes down the bottom takes the bottom path is if it's this shape now does this does that give us a problem this square that square's got to be no that oh perfect look if, if this is right if this is right what's this square it sees one two three snake pieces and that's not possible there's already a three in the column so that is beautiful so if this is a four if this is a four and you try and come right because you need to make a snake of length 18 this square breaks as there is only one way to make a snake of length 18 well to reach the midpoint this square breaks so ergo if this is four the snake has to go over the top whereas we know that if this is not four and this is four this is beautiful if this is <laughs> then the snake also has to go over the top because if it takes that square that square is a four and it clashes so we don't actually have a clue whether this is which one of these is for, but we know whichever one of them is for, the snake goes up. And that is good logic. Um, right, now what does it mean though? So this square now, one, two, three, four, five, six, Oh, that's that. Yeah, this is useful because this square can't be seven because of the column and it already sees six. It, it must be a six. And if it's a six, this square can't be snake. Good grief, Peter. So this has to come out. So now. Oh, you know what I could do? You know what I could do now because I've got the start of the snake here and if we come along the, st the start of the snake from the other direction the fifth cell is a one so I now know one two three four that's got to be a one which means there's a one in this column and five six seven and this square has to be a four now that suggests we are on the right path because this can be a four so that's not a four And now we've gone 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Whoa, okay. So, we, so we've now identified 14 cells of snake in the bottom part of the grid. And we must make the snake 18 cells. So these two snake ends have to connect pretty directly. There's no way this can meander around. It can't come this way now. It's got to basically come straight across. Yeah, it's got to take those three squares and then it either twists up into that one or takes this one. One of those two is the final snake piece, which means this square is more restricted again. Oh, this is perfect. This can't, is this what does it? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, it can't be a six. It can't be six because there's a six in the row. So it must be five. And it must do this. And that is our snake drawn. I think. Which means this square is a four. One, two, three. Yeah, that's a four. And we've done... Oh, we haven't done all our blues. Not Yeah, but we get that one. That's a two. Right, now we've got to... That is remarkable. So we've drawn the snake... 
We've got all the blue Minesweeper swears identified and apparently the Sudoku now finishes this off in conjunction with the palindrome. Okay, so how do we do this then? This four gives us a four here. So these sorts of puzzles now, normally the way they work is that it's brutally hard to get the first couple of digits on the palindrome, but once you do, they tend to fall apart fairly quickly. So our challenge is to try and work out. So this is the midpoint. So these two cells are the same. These two cells are the same. These two cells are the same. Uh, right, okay, well, let's look at one and eight then. One and eight in box three are a little bit interesting, aren't they? Because where do one and eight go in this box? We can't, because these three squares are all snake, if I put one or eight here, it bounces back into that square and I'd have to repeat the one and the eight in box three. So the one and the eight are in these three, well, they're in two of those three squares, which means they're in two of these three, oopsie, two of those three squares. That one can't be one because of the one in the row. Six now. Yeah, the six is also powerful. So this this box seems like it's very restricted because if this, if you look at six from a Sudoku perspective, those three squares get eliminated. If you look at six from a palindromic perspective, this square can't be a six because if it is, that square has to be a six and that will obviously lead to a world of trouble. So six has to be in one of two places in box three. Oh, why didn't that work? Six, there we go. Um, two as well, look. You can't put a two in the first three cells of the snake from this direction because it would force a two into one of those three squares. So two... Yes, 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 got it, got it. Look, two, two therefore has to, can't be on the snake, can't be here by Sudoku. So it's in one of those two squares. Now this one can't be a two. Because if this is a two, it sees two snake cells, it would have the correct minesweeper total, which would mean it would be blue. So that is not blue. The two goes here, the six goes here. Neither of these are on the palindrome. Six must be, ah, six must be in one of those two cells. Two, ah, we get, look, we get a one, two, eight triple at the bottom of the grid. Five, five and seven in row two means five and seven form a pair in. Right now, now, yeah, look at this now. So the only digits we've not placed in this box are three and nine, which have to be here. And now this is on the palindrome. So not only do we know this square is five or seven because it must map to this one, but these two squares are a three, nine pair which means three is in one of those two squares. Oh, this is just, it's just more clever than, cleverness than you can shake a stick at, isn't it? It's beautiful. Now, can we, is there some way one look must be in one of those two squares? If this was a one, that uh, that looks possible. Look, that could be a one because its palindromic equivalent is here. We need one, two, and eight into those three squares just to complete row two. That one can't be a one. So this square and this square are the same. So this one can't be a two. So this can't be a two. Aha, aha, look, these two squares are important. The five here, this five, well, this five doesn't really do anything now. We know this can't be at five, but this five is quite 
crucial because that means that those three squares cannot contain a five in box one because if they do you'd have to put a five in one of these three squares because of the palindromic property so if those can't be five the five is in one of those two squares which means that becomes a five that becomes a seven this seven is on the snake so that becomes a seven so seven is in one of those three set whoopsie one of these three cells And if one of those two squares was a seven, that would equate to, uh, where is it? Three, nine, dot, dot, one of these two squares being a seven. Oh, in fact, that's probably likely, isn't it? Look, in fact, if we do that, you can see the seven is in one of these three squares on the palindrome. So it must be, it must be in one of, well, we know it's not here because that's a seven already. So this can't be seven. But now we know there's definitely a seven in one of those two squares. So we do actually, we can remove the seven from this square. These two squares are fixable. Well, when I say fixable, we can limit them to one, five and eight. That can't be one. So this five, eight must, ah, yeah, look, this square, its mirror is here. And there's a five there, so this must be eight, so that this can be eight, because we couldn't put five in this square. That gives us the one and the five, that gives us the one here. This eight fixes this, yes, 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 we're cooking with gas. Um, so one eight, this becomes an eight. No keep going <laughs> two where's two going column six look it's got to go in one of those two squares now let's check this one this is the third cell uh no that could be a two in fact it probably is a two there's got to be a two yeah okay look there has to be a two by sudoku in one of the three cells after the four so in one of these three squares there must be a two so we know this can't be a two because that would rule that out. So this is a two, this is a two. And of course that then, there endeth the path. Um, now six, seven, nine into these squares. That can't be seven. That can be anything, that can be anything. So we've got this two here mapping to here. Ah, ah, this five is doing more work than I th first thought, look. This can't be a five because this is the cell before the four coming from this direction, which is this square, which is seen by that one by Sudoku. So that's not five, sorry. Which means this is five. This is on the snake. So this is after the one. Du, 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 du. So it's this square is five. If this square is five, that's three trusting our pencil marks. Oh my goodness, this is huge. This is going to be huge because this three, not only does it give us a three there, but I now need to map this onto the palindrome, which is here, I think, the fourth cell along. So this three, now should also have a friend on the palindrome which is down here of all places just before now make, make sure i get it yes that is the right way around uh so these two squares now have got to be six and nine bobbins 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 so that means yeah, it's not quite, is it? So that means those two squares are six and nine. Ah, yeah, yeah, the six here. That, sorry, didn't see the six there. So the nine and six get re resolved, which means this must be nine, this must be six. That fixes the six here. Three. 
So we can fix these two squares, which is probably worth doing. They have to be seven and nine. So after the two, these two squares have to be a seven, nine pair, which forces the six downwards. This puzzle is just fantastic, isn't it? This seven, nine pair fixes the three, nine at the top, which fixes the nine, three here. And you can see the palindrome is working perfectly, which is a good thing. These squares here have got to be three and five, which we can do. The nine here fixes the nine and the seven. Now that nine seven being fixed fixes the nine seven up here as well. We've got to put the nine next to the two. Okay. So maybe these three squares now, they've got to be six, seven and nine. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a seven. So that's a nine, that's a six. Just double check, that looks okay to me. That's a seven, therefore. That's a seven by Sudoku. This column is interesting. We need one, two, and eight to finish it. So let's put one, two, and eight in, or at least one of those squares. This one is on the palindrome, so it has a mirror here. So this is one, two. Oh, that's annoying. That all seems totally possible this square as well. Uh, it's got to be one or eight. This has got to be one. Oh. No, this can't be two. So is this a one eight pair? What's this square then? I should take more trouble. Uh, that square's a nine. Okay. Five must be here. Now if that's the head of the snake or the tail, depending on uh, what your preference is. So if this is a five, that must be a five. So this square must be one, one or eight by Sudoku, which means this square must be one or eight by Sudoku. That can't, oh, look, this is all, I seem to be getting left with a lot of ones and eights and twos here, which means I've probably missed something obvious. Won't be the first time. No comments, please. Um, that can't be one. This square I can do. That's got to be six. Ah, six. These squares here have got to be, oh, two and eight again. Two, eight, and nine. So nine goes there by Sudoku. And these are a two, these are a two, eight pair. Oh, right. So what on earth have I done wrong here? Is this one, eight, one, two, eight, one, eight, one, two, eight. So I've, I seem to have a deadly pattern on ones, twos, and eights. Oh, maybe the negative constraint can help me. Yeah, that cell, look, if that was a one, it would be correct from a minesweeper perspective. So that's not one. That means this square is one by Sudoku, which means this is eight, this is one. That means that's one. Oh, I've done it. Oh no, I haven't. I thought I thought I was going to do that again. So that becomes eight. This becomes two. This becomes one. Now that this two here, I think, should disambiguate the grid. Let's see. Two, two, two. The palindrome looks good. Check. Yes, that's how to solve it. It's brilliant. Brilliant. What more would you expect um, from Peter? Absolutely great. Again, I hope you enjoyed it. Do let us know in the comments. Do try the ARG. Um, and yeah, do look out for our Kickstarter launch of the book. It's so exciting for us. And see you later on. I'm cracking the cryptic.